The community has spoken. Andrew Tate, Candace Owens, We've already done a reaction video for you guys, but you guys wanted to see more. So we're gonna go through most, if not all, of the clips that our producers think, have given us ahead have, of time. I think we have like 15, and we haven't seen yeah. these, so these are gonna be authentic. We have 15 time stamped. So are this, you guys ready? Are you ready? Uh, also, just so you guys know, we're gonna do something fun. When we reach 100,000 subscribers, we are going to shave Isaac's head and make him walk hey, down Hey, I didn't the agree to that. Make him walk down the street in a dress. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> I mean, if we get to 100,000 subscribers, we'll do something crazy. I think the best idea oh, yeah. is to have me, the Viking, and David eat a Carolina Reaper pepper live for you guys. And so you know this guy, the Viking, he might be big, but he can't handle hot. I yeah. Have, I have very sensitive taste buds. Yeah, so he can't, Too eat, he can't even eat a mild sauce. So if you want to see absolute agony, please click that subscribe. Comment as we're going because... This is going to be heavy. We're talking about all the controversial topics in this interview. So a lot of people in the recent video commented about a lot of different aspects of Tate, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So there's some debates so going we're on go in the comments. All that. This is going to be wild. We enjoyed your comments, by the way, and then you guys were debating each other in the comments. It was great. We were sitting back <laughs> laughing our butts off. So let's get into it, guys. Yeah, the all amount right. of, the amount of people who search out Andrew Tate just to hate is freaking hilarious. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely awesome. It's great. It's great. Let's get it. How have you transformed? And I, I've seen changes just, I think, in the last five years. Yep. Who are you today? How have you transformed? That's a very good question. It's also very important when you talk about Candace from 10 years ago. The idea that you did something 10 years ago, which you would no longer agree with, is one thing. But the second thing, to, I, to come along to the conclusion that you now have no value to add to the world would be massively unfair, right? Everybody changes, and that's fine. I'm not the kind of person who's going to sit and apologize for his past. I believe all's well that ends well. I believe we're humans, and we grow and we learn. I'd be a fool and I'd be disingenuous to sit here and pretend I was sorry for something I did in the past. And I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be very honest to everyone at home. I've talked at length for a very long time about my history and the fact I used to run a webcam business. And I don't feel guilty for that. I know that's maybe what they want from me. I don't feel sorry for that. I've never hurt anybody. It has nothing to do with my current criminal case. Everybody who worked for me was very positive. In fact, my Number one supporter is currently online and my best lifelong friends and some of the letters I got in jail were from people who worked for me at that time. And I had a business and I'm not going to sit here and try and pretend that I feel guilty or I feel sorry for that. I'm from a low income background. I did what I had to do to survive. And truthfully, all in all, being very honest, I don't think what I did was really that bad. And I want to say that and I know people are going to lose their minds for it, but I didn't sell drugs. I didn't kill anybody. I mean, what did I do? I, I found a gap in the market and I helped some people organize some accounts on an internet website. That's what I did. And they're going to try and criticize me and crucify me for the next 100 years because of it, because of clips that were made 10 years ago. I think it's disingenuous. And I don't think anyone actually really cares about the virtue of it because nobody who was involved in my life back then is complaining about anything. I think it's just an attack on me. And certainly we learn and we grow and we change. But it's very interesting how hypocritical the idea of looking at somebody's life over such a long period actually is. I mean, we can look at Donald Trump, right? Who I'm a fan of, I guess you're, I know you've had your ups and downs with him, but in the conservative sphere, he's pretty well respected. Donald Trump used to own the Miss Universe pageant. Are we going to crit criticize him? Are we going to crucify him? What about the girls he had in Miss Universe who decided to go on and do Playboy magazine? Is he a bad person now? Why? Now, that's not Christian values, right? It, it, people are messy and life is messy. And nothing is completely clean. And this idea that you're going to find somebody and 10 or 11 years ago, they did something which might even be slightly distasteful, not even illegal. And you're going to slightly? crucify him forever. I just don't believe that's genuine right, virtue. I think it's just an attack. Slightly distasteful? I mean, here's the problem. Ultimately, as a man, mm. he talks about radical self-accountability in his other videos. Hmm. But unfortunately, with the red pill space and all of these influencers, they seem to take radical self-accountability in only certain areas. Yeah. Not, it's not a holistic approach of saying, you know what? I screwed up. I messed up. Yeah. I took advantage of women. I put them on the internet. And then I stole literally life savings from these men who are lonely. He took advantage of men in a lonely state, not even just the women. He took uh, advantage of the men in that state. Yeah, I mean, it's one thing to to feel like you have to apologize, and it's another to completely denounce it and say that he wish because 
he talks about how porn is bad in a lot of his videos, but he's saying that because he was in a poor financial situation that he did what he had to do to survive. He's talking about men stepping up and being strong men and all of his stuff online. And yet he still says when I was in a moment of weakness and didn't have money, (laughs) therefore I did what I had to do to survive. So there's that he's not being consistent in that way. He's not being accountable. He's not being accountable. And again, I'm not saying he has to come online and be like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry for everything I've done in my life because we've all made mistakes. I've done things in the past that I'm not proud of, especially 10 years ago. And yes, I'm not going to go and shout from the rooftops. Oh, I'm sorry, this and that. But I can denounce and say that that's not who I am now. I made many mistakes back in the day. I now have a different viewpoint on it and I will never do that business again because it is wrong. He's talking about how he doesn't think it was that bad. He said it was slightly well, distasteful. Well, he's super anti-porn now. He's super anti-porn, so that there's not a lot of consistency there. Viking, thoughts? I will give him the benefit of the doubt considering he literally just started his journey through having faith in God. He's been an atheist most of his life. And I imagine it's going to take some time for some of his more atheistic views to start lining up I mean, more believe, with his faith. We right? believe in redemption, right? Right, yeah, exactly. You know, anybody can be redeemed. I think it's the problem is he's being super tactful in the way that he's trying to go about it. Well, he's all, well, if I say it a certain way, then it, I might be emasculated. Well, my thing is, you know, the only person he really has to answer to is God, right? So, yeah. so long as he feels sorry and apologizes to God, you know, there's there's not necessarily any any obligation to apologize to the world because at the end of the yeah. day like he did what he did you know it's not like apologizing isn't going to change anything but if you want to you know? change but the he's culture, a figure if, yeah, yeah if no wanna, i fully agree if you want to change the culture that the world is living in as he says all the time yeah you have to start denouncing things i uh, know i agree certain lifestyles but I, I don't expect him to fully apologize and go crazy with it, but you need to speak against that which you recently, you know, in the past did. And we'll see if he does. All right. Yeah, we'll see if he does. I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, give it another year or two of, of walking in a, in a faith-like I lifestyle. think he's developing. I think he's, he's developing. A for lot sure. of people don't think. You can see even in his countenance on this interview, it's a lot different than the way he was 10 years ago. It is. He's more, he's more round. So he's more centered. You know, he's. He's not talking down to Candace, at least from what we can see so far. Yeah, yeah he's but. he's al- he's allowing and being very uh, open to what she's saying. So let's keep going. So the way that I read you, and you can definitely let me know if I'm wrong, obviously, because you are you, is that people that don't come from a lot, me and you, yeah. obviously, um, obviously have different decisions that lay before us in life than people that come from everything or people that come from a very stable household, two loving parents. Um, And this kind of gets into the dilemma. I remember years ago, Tommy Lahren had said something, she's a political commentator in the US, had said something to the effect of, well, you know, Jay-Z used to sell crack. And he sort of laughed. And he probably did. And he did. And he sort of laughed this off. And (laughs) I remember looking at that because I looked up to Jay-Z's music so much, you know, and I looked up to him because it made it possible for me to change my circumstances. Are like you looking at this guy yeah. who comes from nothing? He came from the projects. He sold drugs, and then he does, doesn't have to sell drugs anymore. And he's now talking about ideas and talking about business. So I was able to more closely understand and go, okay, I can actually climb out of these circumstances, even though I didn't wasn't born, you know, with yeah. a ton of wealth and a lot of opportunities that some like some people were. Yeah. And I think it's very difficult for people that don't come from nothing to understand that. And they're so sure that if they were in desperate circumstances that they would still never do anything. But this is their massive mistake. And you're right, but this is their massive mistake. The reason I have such huge affinity with the youth of the world today, especially the masculine youth, is one, because a lot of them are disenfranchised, which is one conversation. But two, also the reason my reach is so global, the reason I have so many fans in Slovenia and Southside Chicago and I've, been, I've had kids from Ulan Bator come up to me, Mongolia, all around the world. It's because I speak to the disenfranchised, and part of that is always going to be, or is going to involve, financially disenfranchised. I'm, I'm someone who comes from absolutely nothing and made himself into something. And unfortunately, there's a rocky road sometimes, like you just described with Jay-Z, to get that done. But if I would have been born into a perfect family, like you said, two loving parents, family was rich, white picket fence, and I was saying all the same things, then they wouldn't have the same affinity. 
So if you look at even a lot of superheroes, you look at Batman, he's a flawed person. And I think the reason I'm, I'm seen as a hero and the reason I have the fan base I have, is because to a degree, I've always been a flawed person and I'm not a perfect human and I don't want to be. And I think that that actually adds a lot of credibility to my character as a whole, that I've become the kind of person who believes he can add value to the world. And just like you said with Jay-Z, he changed. And the biggest thing for me personally, though, truthfully, and I want the whole world to understand this, I've been forensically analyzed by multiple different federal agencies from different countries for the last 17 months, mm. analyzing mm. every aspect of my entire life across the last 10 to Can't 15 imagine. years. <laughs> and what did they find? An old YouTube clip? That's the worst they could find. No sexual perversion, no drugs, no genuine criminal acts. They found something semi-immoral in a YouTube clip. And I would actually challenge anybody who wants to throw stones at me to go through the same level of scrutiny I have been under. And let's see what they find in your life. I can't. Because I guarantee anyone who's watching this right now, you sit there, you have a secret in your closet. You have a skeleton that you don't want anyone to know about. And they would have found it. So what's the worst thing that they found about me, considering I've been the most attacked man in the world for 17 months? An, mm. out, an outdate YouTube clip? An out-of-context YouTube clip? Is that the worst? I think, it's, I think it's crazy that people aren't even sitting there and going, okay, this guy's been absolutely attacked and from every single angle, and this is the worst they could possibly drag up. Right. Mm. No, I agree with you. So I, the question I would ask you, though, and it, because obviously you've moved away from that business, you now, the thing I find to be the most interesting about you is that younger boys yep. love you. Yes. They absolutely, like the 12, 13-year-old, 14-year-old, I, I, I have not come yep. across a 12, 13-year-old boy who's not just an Andrew Tate stan. Yeah. And I think that's, it's remarkable. It gives you a lot of power. And I think this is perhaps the interest that a lot of people have in you is what are you going to do with this power, right? You yeah. have all these boys, they believe in you, they mm. stand up for you. Yeah. And that is why it becomes important to state, I'm not sorry that I lived this. I don't think I would say that I'm sorry for anything that I, decisions that I made when I was young either, because that, this is the deck of hands that I was given. What do you want me to do? Yeah. But at the same time, I do try to now knowing that I have such a following of, of a lot of young ladies that follow me say like, listen, I did the idiot stuff. So you don't have to. power, power and responsibility go hand in hand. And mm, that's the thing that's so point. interesting. These out of date clips and they want to talk about these things from 10 years ago. At the time when I was talking to camera, those videos were made for private circulation initially. Secondly, I wasn't trying to educate the world in anything back then. I didn't have the kind of power and influence I have back then. The way you say something to a video, which has 50 viewers, has to be different than the way you say something to a video that has 50 million viewers. Mm. Power and responsibility absolutely go together. And I understand mm. that very well. And I understand the power mm. I have. And I do believe I'm that's now an absolute force for good in the world. And I'm far more careful with how I'll project myself with certain ideas. Absolutely agree, completely. But that's the thing that's even so crazy about all of it. These old videos everyone's so concerned about wouldn't even circulate if my haters weren't constantly trying to use them against me. They're, they're, they'd be disappeared into the history of the internet. I don't know where these things come from. I don't know where they were found. I don't know where they are. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. A lot of people are making all these constant attacks on me. And I don't watch a lot of it. I'll have to be honest with you, Candace. I don't watch all of it. But a lot of the videos are so outdated. The only reason they even exist now is because my haters are so desperate trying to take me down. They don't have any concern for them being seen because they wouldn't be cir circulating them otherwise. Mm -hmm. So yeah, absolutely. Power and responsibility go hand in hand. And I do believe that I now have a huge platform. And with young boys, they're ex exceptionally interested in my case. I do believe to a degree I'm an anti-hero. I do believe to a degree that the harder I'm attacked, the more credibility is given to me in the eyes of my fans. I think that they see, ah, everyone's out to get That's this so guy. True, like, mm -hmm. Everyone's out true. to get Batman. This so kind true. of feels that way. And I do try and lead everyone down a good path and say extremely positive things. And I don't think anybody is finding any clips from the last five to six years which have anything negative in them. Yeah, I, I just feel like a lot of young people, specifically Candace mentioned 12 to 13 year olds, a lot of young men are feeling very disenfranchised. Mm -hmm. They feel that they can't really be men or their parents, they didn't have the nuclear family you know, type environment where they had a father in the home teaching them how to be men mm -hmm. from a young age. So they go to someone like Andrew and they say, well, he has the money, he has the status, he has the girls, and they want to be that, but the world is telling them that that's a bad thing yeah. and that it's wrong to be successful and it's wrong to speak up as a man yep. for what you believe in. And even a lot of you know, you know, know, churches or businesses, they, they teach this even from an HR perspective of 
you can't truly be who you are as a man and stand up and stand out because you will be canceled, you'll be silenced, yeah. you'll be censored. Yeah. And this isn't even political, guys. We're not even talking about yeah, politics. Yeah, we're not going into that. We're talking about just the, the natural gender roles that God put in place are being attacked right now. And Andrew's saying, no, I'm just a masculine man. I had a lot of things in my past that I struggled with. I'm not that person anymore. And now I'm teaching men the natural tenets, which he talks about his 41 tenets on his website, how to be a man. Those little things, I think it's the little things that really matter in this is because nobody's perfect. The character that a man has is ultimately defined by his actions. I think it's very interesting what Candace said. She said she made all the mistakes so that now young women don't have to. Yeah. And I like that, but it comes with a caveat. It comes with the caveat that if you are going to make those mistakes so women don't have to, you then have to speak out against the negative action that you did take. Yes. And it's not necessarily apologizing, groveling on your knees, but if you are going to have an impact that goes beyond just you know, telling people the good, the good of today, you're telling them what you've done in the past, you need to be open and willing to share why that is not you anymore and why you are avidly against that. And he said that, and Andrew said that as your following gets bigger, there are certain things that you can do and say back in the day that you can't say now, right? Yeah, you're holding to, so that's one, to a different That's one standard. thing I do appreciate about him is he understands his his role now in society that it's grown and now he has a massive influence. Yeah. Uh, but you still, the one thing I still wish you would do is just say, I regret what I've done in that way. But I don't think he has because he made so much money from it. So it's kind of a two edged sword in that way where he doesn't want to apologize for it. Cause he knows he made a lot of money. Yeah. Leaders but, can't do what everybody else does. Exactly. The, the higher influence that you have, the more responsibility that you have to, protect your audience, yep. protect your followers because you're responsible. Their blood is on your hands. If you're influencing them to go a certain way, yep. you have to know that they might actually listen to you. Correct. They might take the tenets of what you're saying and actually Especially apply Especially young them. kids. See, young I think kids. that I think that is Andrew's way of apologizing. Is saying, hey, yeah. look, I realize I, I have think it, such it a massive following how, now. It, it probably comes back to how his father raised him as well. Yeah. You know, but, yeah his well, father but, was nuts. But we'll go in, in a good way. Yeah, but we'll move on. Unfortunately, when you buy into the slave man mind programming, you do not become the kind of man who can easily attract a, a woman because you're not attracted yeah. to females <laughs> as a whole. So yeah, how do you satisfy boy. yourself? You end up sitting there staring at a screen and they convince you that's a good life to live as a man and that's perfectly fine and perfectly normal. And you don't even get to genetically reproduce. Mm. I do also though, and I wanna make this clear, I do believe in absolute and utter self accountability as a man. I think as a man, everything that happens to you is your fault. Me going to jail was my fault me being attacked online was my fault. If all these bad things that happened to me, I will take responsibility for, even if I believe they were unfair or unjust. And I think that any man who's gonna sit there and say, I'm, I'm struggling, I'm struggling, he also needs to wake up and understand that if you're gonna truly struggle to not click on a website, then you're gonna deserve the terrible life you're gonna live. Yes. And I the agree. devil or the matrix or whoever you wanna call them are gonna fill your life with temptations. They're yeah. gonna fill your life with promise. easy way outs that they're, they're gonna want you to take because the good road is usually the hardest road. If you're going to continue to fall for them, then you're going to have to suffer the consequences of that. So mm. it's 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 double edged. It's certainly difficult that pornography is everywhere and men are struggling with it. But to me, what's even more upsetting is that these men don't have enough fortitude and enough mental strength to wake up and say, I'm better than that. Okay. But 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 this is this is the thing. Right. So I'm about to get started. Candace. No. This is the oh, thing. Let's see. But this is the thing, right? So when you attack a man's mental fortitude on one issue, you attack it on all issues. Yes. This is why it's done purposefully. To resist a slave mind, you need to be able to resist in the first place. How can you mm -hmm. resist a slave mind if you have no physicality, you have no willpower, no ability to mentally resist anything? Well, then what are you going to end up doing? You're going to end up eating the bugs and watching the porn and sitting in front of your computer. And that's what they want from, <laughs> bugs. from the people. So I think that it's actually all very interconnected. People come at me with the porn problem and I get the same thing. Guys say to me all the time, hey, what are you going to do? What should I do? I struggle with pornography. And I say, that's because you have nothing else in your life in order. Purpose. If you were in good physical condition, and you had the money you were supposed to have, and you had the mentality you were supposed to have, you wouldn't need it. 
So the reason mm. you're so addicted to porn is because everything else in your life is a failure. <laughs> and the hard truth. Yeah, it's certainly a complicated issue. It's a difficult one. And this is why they fear male agency so much, because when men truly wake up and decide to be the best versions of themselves, they're hard to control because all mm. these control mechanisms fall by the wayside. They don't want the porn anymore. They don't want the antidepressants anymore. They don't want the garbage anymore. And now you have a whole bunch of men who actually want truth and honor and respect and they want to live for something. And then what are they going to live for? They're gonna to wanna to be brave. They're gonna to wanna to do the right thing, regardless of how dangerous it may be for their own personal circumstance. And that sounds like a difficult population to enslave. I mean, mm. that's, that's what's scary. Mm. That is so good. Yeah, it's some powerful stuff. <sighs> I think a lot of people struggle hearing that from somebody that was in the business he's in. <laughs> and I think that's one of the most difficult parts about Andrew Tate and why so many parts of his life is controversial and people online love him and hate him is because of that that dilemma, that contradiction of him telling you why you're a loser, essentially, if you watch porn and you don't get your life in order, but yet he was supplying it to men because he saw a business. And I think that's why it's so hard for people yeah, to stomach it. it's controversial. Him. It is controversial. Yeah, I mean, there is a slight caveat in the fact that old webcam businesses like what he had wasn't entirely focused on porn. It was more focused on just chatting with lonely men. Yeah, man, it's it's a powerful message still because yeah, it, it's it's you know it's the mindset. I want to I want to talk about that for a second. A mindset he's talking about is when you when you have a weak mind as a man, naturally the temptations that are are a promise that will be thrown at you become more likely for you to stumble into because if you don't have that brotherhood of men around you that can be that anchor for when you are tempted like dude like if i call you jordan i'm like hey man i'm struggling like i really want to look at porn right now and you're and you don't call me out and say isaac get up off your butt stop watching tv come to the gym with me right now or drop and give me 50 push-ups by like, the way this is why it's good to have a brotherhood because i literally made it to where isaac can't watch porn even if he wanted to <laughs> yeah i mean i struggle uh, we all struggle right like it was it's been a problem of mine since i was you know, eight or nine years old is when yeah. I was introduced to it, right? That's my personal story is I was introduced to it when I was like nine years old. And, you know, it's, it's, it was way harder back then to look at it than it is today. It's everywhere. And so men, it's okay to know that you ha you can go to brothers with these yeah. issues. We were, nobody's impervious to temptation. Yeah. It's just a natural fact of life. It's a promise, but you can with God's help and your brothers actually get out of this and stay out of it. But it does take some radical steps. You have to actually go to your, your friends and say, look, this is what I'm dealing with. Don't go to just anybody and tell them you look at porn, by the way, yeah. because people will judge you. They will hate you. They'll think that you're a pervert. You're not, you're just a man who's struggling. Yeah. yeah. I struggled but, in my marriage, dude. Like, yeah. For years. And I felt depression and I felt all these other things and a lot of it was But is there. depression real? Well, that's the whole we're not getting into that right now. <laughs> that's a different We're not getting into that. <laughs> but if you don't have those people in your life, you still have to have the will the mental fortitude to say I want to become better and then having a brotherhood is kind of like you know gasoline to the fire it just makes it that much more abundant and you can you go even further but you still have to have that that self, that innate want and desire to change, I think. And that right. comes with yeah. it too. Mindset is important. I mean, it's, it's, we're not just telling you, get a strong mind. Just do it. It takes time to build. It takes time to build. Yeah. It's a daily process. You can't expect for your mind to be as, you know, as sharp as an Andrew Tate overnight. He spent decades you know, fortifying his brain and his like, mind. Even in his childhood. Even though. in his childhood. So let's go uh, to the next clip, yeah? Go. So how do you reconcile, uh, first off, how long ago was your webcam business? Yeah, so I stopped, I stopped having any involvement with it, I think eight to nine years ago, I stopped. It was a long time so ago, it was at the early stages it. of the internet. Mm -hmm. And I'll explain it one more time for people. I've explained it already at length, but I'll explain it from the beginning. I had a company, I was fighting at the time. And on a side note, I actually wanna make this clear. We talk about things people have done in the past for money. I beat, I beat people up for money. <laughs> I hurt people for money. I don't often tell people this, and I, I think it's the first interview I've mentioned it in. There's a person who can never walk the same again because he fought me. I've had 87 professional fights, and I did my best to kill people. <laughs> You're going to sit here and talk about what I did for money. I literally hurt people for money. And uh, so I, I'm a perfect person. I'm, I'm not sorry for my kickboxing career or my cage fights. I'm not sorry for any of them. I had bare knuckle fights. I'm not sorry for any of them. 
right? I was a person who had to pay the bills. I lived the life I lived. I used the tools I had. And I ended up opening a webcam company where girls would sit on a laptop and they would talk to guys on the internet for money. That's what they would do. The girls would sit there fully clothed or a bikini. Some of them would paint or pictures. Some of them would sing songs. sing songs. It's very similar to Twitch's now. Twitch is almost more sexual than the sexual websites were back then. <laughs> I helped very the girls true. set up accounts. We worked together. I helped them become as popular as possible. And everybody made money and everybody was happy. And nobody is complaining about it. Nobody's upset about it. None of the girls who worked for me are upset about it. The government are after me for it. It's perfectly legal. Nothing's wrong with it. There's just a whole bunch of people who now think that they can take the moral high ground against me because I, per I previously ran this company. And I think I can anticipate the question you're going to ask. How do I reconcile with the fact that I used to produce pornography right. or degree porno por pornographic content? Now men are writing to you like, how do I? And now men are trying to escape yeah. it. Yeah. Mm. That's a really good question. There's a few different ways I can answer that question. I think the first way I'll answer it is if you own a liquor store and an alcoholic comes in and you refuse to sell him alcohol, does he stop being an alcoholic? No. He just goes and buys from someone else. So that's the cop, that's the cop out answer. Yeah. That's yeah the cop that's out, the cop out. Well, they were all These people who are addicted are always going to be addicted regardless of whether I did it or not. So that's the cop out answer. But the second answer I can give, which I think is more detailed and probably more nuanced is one, I intimately understand the relationship between men and these websites. I've had and seen men give away their life savings Jeez. to girls they never met. I've watched and I've seen it. And I actually think a lot of the insights I give, a lot of the things I tell the world about the male men, mental health crisis, about men being so constantly lonely, about how important it is to build yourself into a high value man, about how money alone is not enough. I explain all these things. A lot of these are lessons from the webcam days. I saw dudes who had a whole bunch of money, no other attributes, and they ended up on these websites spending hundreds of thousands of oh dollars because they gosh, didn't have anything else. Dude. Money isn't so enough. So I think I learned a lot of important life lessons and I do my best to try and pass them on to people. But I guess also, and this is the final answer I want to give about this whole subject, is that I do think I can take the question you're asking and reverse engineer it and use it against the people who are trying to attack me for it. My, my answer to it would be, how do you sit and want to criticize me for being involved in the production of pornography 10 or 11 years ago if you're involved in the consumption of it? Because that you're creating goes a market. Back to what for I already it. said. So anybody who wants to sit and say that I did things wrong, that's fine. You're allowed to throw stones. But if you're in a glass house, if you have ever signed up to an OnlyFans account, if you have Instagram, if you're following these models on Instagram who you don't know, who are showing their tits and ass all day, if you've watched porn, if you fancy or think some beautiful woman on a on a movie, if you're gonna live in lust yourself and you're funding this entire industry, you're downstream, you're at the bottom of it. How can you then take the moral high ground on the person who's producing it? That doesn't make sense to me. So if you've totally abstained from pornography your entire life and you've never looked at it ever and you've never been involved with it ever and you're a perfect person and you want to come along and say what I did was wrong, that's fine. But I don't think most people who are complaining can even say that. I don't think they can. And I, and I will once again state this and I state this for, as a matter of almost fact. The level of investigation I have gone under, the level of forensic investigation my life has been submitted to. Most people don't understand. Most people have never been through what I've been through. They've not had their entire life forensically analyzed. Every word they've ever said, everyone they've ever spoken to, every WhatsApp chat, everything, head to toe by federal agencies for the last 10 years. And the most they come up with is that I ran a webcam company, which I've already admitted to. That's it. Take these people who criticize me and see how many porn websites they've been on. Get their laptops. See the they've Googled. See who they've spoken to. Like, it's... <laughs> It's all massively hypocritical. I do understand that some people would hear that and go, oh, you know, he's a bad person, et cetera. I don't think I was a bad person. I never hurt anybody. I think I could have done much worse things. I know many people from my circumstances who did many things worse than what I did. And all in all, I'm not gonna sit and pretend I'm sorry for something I'm not sorry for. And I, I just wanna make it clear to the world that, like you said, people come from different backgrounds and, and people grow and people change, et cetera. But I also look at the world in a different way. I think that we're all constantly doing our best. I think I'm doing the best I can right now. When I'm 55, I might watch this interview and think I'm an idiot, right? And I think we're all constantly doing our best. Mm. And mm. I did the best I could do at the time. And I don't think it makes sense for me to hate past me for doing his best. I just don't think that's a very constructive mindset. I do agree with him about people being hypocritical because the amount of energy that goes into hating Andrew Tate for his past webcam business. If you're going to hate on him with that much energy, direct it at, at like pimps on OnlyFans. 
they're selling like yeah. actual real pornography and like pimping these girls out to work as hard as they can like directed at people who are doing it now why direct it at him it's only because of the influence he has yeah Right, and that was over a decade ago. It was over it's, a decade ago. Directed at the people who are involved now. I have a question for you guys: and is the consumer worse or the producer? Of it's definitely of, the producer. I, it's definitely I agree. the producer. If you think of it in terms of drugs, you know, in terms of pornography, I don't think we can morally say that they are the same. They're not. There's a reason why. If you are caught selling drugs, you go to jail much longer than if you are caught consuming. And it's because you are making it easily available to ruin the lives of others. Yeah. Yeah. If you are watching porn, you are hurting your own life. Yes, you might be hurting your family's life, but it's so singular. It's so much more personal. But when you are when you are the producer of it, it is a significantly worse thing. It's like if you own a business, right? If you're the top, if you're the person that is in charge of other people, you can hurt and have a way more influence than if you're just an employee hurting yourself, right? It's kind of the same thing. So I get what he's saying. I think we need to stop judging people and look at our own lives and improve ourselves. I think we spend way too much yeah. time uh, pointing fingers at others when we need to improve ourselves. If we are perfect like Jesus, then we can throw the first stone. Yeah, I mean, it's ultimately self-accountability. I do not, I still don't think that consumption and producing is the same. You can't take your own past moral failures and equate them to the consumer. So if you're producing content or you're producing, you know, sexual content or you're having girls, I guarantee you, and he said, they're all happy and this and that. I think deep down in their souls, they weren't. Because if you're selling yourself online, whether that's not, even if you're not taking your clothes off, there is something inside of every human being that deep down in their souls, they don't want to do that. They don't want to sell their bodies. They don't want to, you know, take money from men, their life savings. Yeah. It goes back to the moral, the morality of it. A good woman does not want to do that. Yeah. And I'm in the film industry. My wife is in the photography industry. So we've come across and have our friend, we have friends that are in the adult entertainment industry, whether that's stripping or whatever. And I feel for them, especially because a lot of them are single moms and they can't make enough to support their child if they're a waitress or if they are doing, you know, any other simple job because being a single mom is extremely difficult. So I do want to say, if you're in that industry, I feel for you and we're not here to condemn you. Sometimes if, I mean, if you have a child, you're willing to do almost anything for them, right? I'll put my life on the line, whatever it takes for my child to have a roof over their head. So I really, I can, as a father, kind of feel that. So we, I don't want anybody to think that we're putting women down that have that. It's just, it's tough to see him taking advantage of certain situations back in the day and having no remorse and now equating it to someone watching porn. I just, it's tough for me to connect with that this goes back to the men right because yeah. ultimately as we talked about on previous episodes that if you want to target a society you target the weak men yeah or you target men right and where are the fathers where are the fathers in these families that left the mom to deal with the kids right by herself and have to raise them and try to figure out how to you know have those masculine traits and go out into the world and provide for her family those men that's just a moral failure yeah. I mean, men's fathers need to come back into the family and actually have some type of moral high ground and say, hey, I'm back. I want to take care of the family. I want to provide. And that's what men are supposed to do. This is true. However, I also say I'll, I'll slightly disagree with you oh, on one let's thing. Get, let's get spicy. So like women do have to take self accountability too I agree. for their I own agree. actions. Yeah. Right. So I do agree. You know, if women are picking bad partners to begin with, and I mean, women are very, very well calibrated social creatures yeah intuition very very good at intuition so like man if you pick a bad person to begin with and become a single mother becoming a stripper or doing any type of sex work at all is is not a good way to go about it there's like a million trillion programs for single women to not have to do things like that. Like that's not. Well, yeah, a lot of those systems are set up for them not to work. Yeah. But I, 
but going, yeah, kind of saying with what you're saying, I think the reason why is because of the lack of strong men in society. Oh, because well, that's I, true. Because it's kind of what Andrew has said that us as men need to take accountability that a lot of those single household families, yes, the women do have a choice in who they you know get pregnant with or who they marry, but us as men need to realize that we are not stepping up to make it so that those women maybe even have a lot of options. Because if you're in, in certain worlds and certain spheres and certain cultures, it can be tough to find a man that's going to stick around for a long time. Yeah. So I think it is a balance, but I do agree with what you said. It's just, I think as men, we need to, we need to stand up and get strong. We need to really know that we are here to protect and to take care of, of women and we are partners. So I'm not saying, Oh, we just, there are underneath of us, but there's a certain thing as a man that we need to step up and do. So I right, agree. Let's continue. So I want to shift gears here and talk about your dad because I'm quite fascinated. Ooh, I'm, I'm dad, your dad. He passed go. recently. Yeah. How many years ago? Uh, nine, I think nine years. Nine years ago. Yeah. But wow, just wasn't <laughs> what I was expecting. A chess champ yeah. served the country. Um, mm. His name was Emery. Yeah. Really cool interesting to talk about just, I, I guess, your upbringing with him as this chess champ. How did he get into chess? Yeah, my, I, I do believe I had the best father on the planet. A lot of the things I regurgitate. He I'll looks just like him. him. A lot of the things I say, <laughs> yes. he literally he's said to me line expected. for line. Super old Tate. I believe that he was very morbid in his approach to life. Mm, mm. And he wanted me to understand that he will not be here forever. And he wanted me to understand that when he was gone, I had a duty to fulfill. He mm, talked about dying a lot, which I guess is kind of unusual, but he would. Even though he was relatively young, he died when he was 58. Oh. But he was a chess, yeah, he was a chess professional. He was a professional chess player. He was one of the best chess players in the world. And he, what's most interesting about him is he almost predicted the future absolutely and utterly perfectly. He was talking about the Ukraine-Russia war back in 2013. And he was talking about wow. how Smart gay children, gay people can't have children. So they're going to come for your children. Trust me, that's what they're going to do. The children are next. Like he'd say all these things back like 10 or 11 years ago. And I'd be like, all right, dad, you're a bit crazy. Calm down. But uh, <laughs> I guess when you're a chess player, you see the future. And he raised me with absolute accountability and he certainly raised me and Tristan to be, he understood what the world expects of men and he raised us to be strong. And even when we were in jail, my mother would call, I'd speak to her on the phone and she'd say, how are you doing? And I'd say, oh, don't worry. And my, she would say, yeah, dad raised you for this. Like we were always mm -hmm. raised to be warriors. So that's interesting. I don't think I could have possibly ever had a better father. I, I, I'm going to miss him forever. Mm -hmm. And I think the best thing I can do is be the best version of myself to give honor and respect to him. And I think that's the best thing. Where did he pick up chess? It's quite unusual. He's American. He's he was American. American. Yeah. Black American. Yeah. I don't know too many black American chess players, full stop. <laughs> um, where did he pick up chess? He taught himself. And he taught himself and he just read a couple books. I think he read three chess books and ended up being one of the best players in the world. And it's incredible. It, it's incredible. Wow. But it's actually interesting when you talk about, we were just discussing affinity and how people are imperfect people and how it uh, allows you to actually teach things better. My father, towards the end of his chess career, especially made most of his money teaching chess in mm. inner city schools. That's super cool. Because he's a big That's black awesome. guy. So the children would be like, ah, okay, I'll listen to this man, you're right? So it's amazing how affinity is real and coming from a certain socioeconomic background is real. And, you know, we all talk about how ridiculous racism is, but also to a degree, pattern recognition is real. I look like him, I can be like him. These things are real. So yeah, he, he did fantastically well in terms of teaching, especially disadvantaged children. And uh, he taught himself, and I wish I had his mind. I'm not nearly as intelligent as he was. I wish you I was. you got to be real smart to be a good chess player. You've got to be better than smart. I actually think you go <laughs> beyond the realm of smart into a... I wouldn't say he was on the spectrum, but you certainly get to a new <laughs> level of socio Autism? interactions. Do you understand? I'd go to chess tournaments when I was a kid, and everybody there would be a world-level chess player, and everyone was a bit strange, a little bit. <laughs> um, I don't know if it's like that anymore. I, I see the chess communities now moved online. There's a lot of them playing online. They seem a lot more normal than the grandmasters I remembered. Mm -hmm. I remembered old grandmasters half drunk, ex-KGB, shaking <laughs> at the board. The yeah, like uh, it was a bit different back then. But um, yeah, I wish I had his level of intellect. He was certainly the smartest person I've ever known. And even when he died, I got endless emails from people I'd never heard of who just said, I, I worked with your dad and I don't think you understand 
how smart he was. He about, served America, yeah? He served America. He was in the Air Force, and he was a linguist for the CIA. He, he joined <laughs> wow. the Air Force and ended up wow. being a linguist for the intelligence. What other languages did he speak? He spoke Russian, German, Spanish, and English, but Jeez. officially he was supposed to speak Russian. He learned, he assimilated Russian in two weeks. I think he holds the Air Force record. What? Okay, so he's, that, he's yeah. very smart. Yeah, super, ridiculously smart. Yeah. I got an email from somebody when he died, and they said that, I just want to send you an email. You don't know who I am. I was serving with your father in the armed forces. I don't, you tell everybody your dad was smart and they're not gonna understand how smart he was. And I wanna give you a quick story. I was living with a Russian woman and I already spoke Russian conversationally when I began the Air Force training to learn Russian. Your father knew nothing, didn't know the alphabet, didn't know nothing. Wow. And within two and a half weeks, he was correcting everybody, including the professor on Russian. Oh my God. <laughs> so like dude. he just read the dictionary. I saw my dad sit there and read a dictionary, just read it. And that was it. He was yeah. like photographic on memory. Like, yeah. He's on, on a spectrum. Yeah. Some, something else going on. Yeah, something, something yeah. else. A little X-Men. On. Emery Tate was his name and everyone called him E.T. Yeah. He's tough <laughs> e. on you. E. He was Phone certainly home. tough on me. And I, I can't, I can't <laughs> express enough how grateful I am for that. Wow. I, we live in a world now where I'm going to say that my dad hit me when I made a mistake and everyone's going to lose their minds. And they're going to pretend I was somehow abused and that somehow my childhood was terrible. And I could not thank, if he was come down to earth today, I would shake his hand and say, thank you for absolutely everything you gave me including discipline, including understand that, understanding that in the harsh realities of the real world, there is a line. And if you cross that line, violence appears. Mm. That's the unfortunate reality of earth. Yep. <laughs> There's a line. And if you cross it, violence will appear either from a cop or from a guy on the street or from someone you don't like, or even a friend will turn on you, whatever. There's a line that sh shouldn't be crossed. And I learned that from a very young age. And I'm very thankful for that. I'm not sitting here saying a kid should be abused. There's a difference between abuse and discipline. Of course, everyone yes, with the brain understands that. Line. But he was extremely tough on me. And if I could change anything about my childhood, I'd only wish he was tougher. Because right. life's tough. Life's hard. And I think that the best thing you can possibly do as a man is prepare for the endless difficulty that's going to come your way. There's no, there's no way out as a man. You're either going to have a very difficult life to become somebody important, or you're going to suffer the difficulty, be, difficulty of being invisible. Mm -hmm. What do you want to do? You want to be invisible and just hide and, and work in Starbucks and never have a girlfriend who truly loves you and nobody <laughs> care if you live or die? Hey, I worked or do you want to go barista. out there and be top G and be the most famous man in the world and have government agencies trying to lock you up for no reason, putting you in a dungeon? You have to make a choice. It's going to be difficult either way. So I think if you have a son and you're not preparing him for absolute difficulty, you're doing him a disservice. Mm -hmm. I think that's what has mm -hmm. to happen as a man. And it's, I've said this many times before, but I'm going to say it again. I don't think many people understand exactly how competitive the masculine world is. Mm -hmm. Men are constantly in competition with each other. We always have been. We used to go to war and fight and kill each other. I guess yep. in some places we still do. Yeah. Maybe that's calmed down a little bit. But in the masculine world of today... Everybody is constantly competing for everything. The car that you want, other people want. The woman you want, other pe people want. The house you want, other people want. You're competing to have all of it. And mm -hmm. how do you do that? You do that through status and money and influence and power. It's war. I don't think many re women realize that when two men even meet each other for the first time, it's like an unspoken, maybe tiny bit at the back of the mind, there's a tiny <laughs> analysis of could I fight this man? <laughs> yes. That's real. It's super real. It's very real. You go up and say, hello, hello. Candace mm. loves that. He's more she than a one it. punch issue. That's it. <laughs> She's awesome. Oh, he's one punch. He's one punch. Mm, he's three or four. That's the reality of the masculine world because we've evolved. <laughs> if you believe in evolution, but I, my, my views are mixed. Uh -oh. We've evolved to be in this position where we're constantly analyzing possible threats and we're constantly analyzing people who, who perhaps are on our team or snakes, et cetera. And I think that not many people understand exactly how brutally competitive the masculine world is. And I think the worst thing you can do for a son is just to raise him in a bubble. I, my dad, I'll say it here, the people lose their minds. My dad used to just randomly push me over. I'd be like three. <laughs> just a, not hard, but just a little nudge. Get up, boy. Okay. <laughs> mom would be okay. like, why are you doing that, son? He's like, Andrew. get pushed over. That's life. My mom hated wow. that he did that to me. But, uh. Yeah, I, I can give him nothing but praise. I, I'm really so thankful I had the, the upbringing. I that's had. good. Think, wow. So that's, a lot to unpack. That's, that was a long clip, gents. So I just want to say, I, I fully believe Emery was absolutely very high-functioning autistic. Because mm -hmm. like, if you look at, when it comes to intelligence, usually people who, have, it's it was it's used to be classified as Asperger's. I think they changed it, but... You know, people with Asperger's are incredibly high functioning social autists. Yeah. But usually Asperger's comes with higher intelligence. Most most people with autism are, are of higher intelligence. Because they, they can focus their brain on like they one can, or two. Yeah, things. exactly. We become absolutely obsessed 
um, with whatever it is we care about or interested in or want to learn. Um, and there's, there's usually higher pattern recognition with yeah. people who are autistic. So the ability to, to, you know, just say, Oh, you know what? I want to learn how to play chess, read three books and become a grand master at it. Russian or, you know, I want to learn how to read Russian Jeez, or I want to learn dude. Russian and do it in two weeks to the point where you're correcting, you know, professors. even professors in it. Like, bro, that's that's some very, very high functioning. Wow. Autistic stuff. Wow. I love what uh, he talked about his dad, uh, you know, helping inner city youth. That was amazing. Uh, learn chess and teach them. And that was his his dad's way of giving back to the community exactly. yeah. and helping young men. Now, Andrew's taken that to a bigger scale of saying, I want to help young men globally yeah, to have a better mindset, be a better man. And I like that a lot, that how highly he talks of his dad and the respect that you can even see in his eyes. Just his even his countenance changed as yeah. soon as his dad was. Oh, born. yeah. He's even said in other videos that his dad was absolutely his superhero. Yeah. And I, I that's what I want to be when I have children one day that my son that I raise, you know, with he, which he talked about to discipline its difference between abuse and discipline. Very. Yeah. Yeah. I want to raise my son to be such a badass <laughs> that when he walks out onto the street, people say that is a Wilson. Yeah. <laughs> that you know, is a Wilson. like the, my name <laughs> is the most important thing to me other than my relationship with God or anything else, because that name will be passed down from generation to generation. And I want to know that's a Wilson, you know, yeah. David, yeah. would you agree? Like that's a no, Wilson. I, I agree. I know. I a hundred percent agree that I want to raise my kids, my, especially my sons to be very, very strong to know the world isn't going to give them everything that they have to fight for it. I think one of the regrets I have in my life is that I wasn't pushed to learn martial arts. So, oh man, I wish in the future we might we might join a kickboxing or boxing gym and go at it and we'll film it for you guys. By the way, guys, type in the comments if you would like to see a video of me the Viking and David in a and sparring actually in a boxing ring. <laughs> Maybe if we get to ten thousand, when we get to ten thousand subscribers, we can do a we'll video do of us oh, in yeah. the boxing ring just going at it. I've so yeah, got please subscribe. Goals. We're gonna we'll keep going, but I it's gonna be tough because again, my children are like my babies too. So it's going to be very difficult for me to push over my three year old son and be like, just get ah, up. You know, maybe just give him a maybe three's a tiny three's a little, little like bit seven younger. or eight. Like, maybe give just him like a give him a little nudge, nudge. you know? Now nah, at five years old, you're going to start getting pushed over. <laughs> the Viking is going to create. But see, like I, I fully agree with the fighting thing because it's like I've said before, you know, yeah. for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And even Andrew kind of alluded to this, you know, men went to war. Yep. You know, we, we were born and raised to fight and die. And, yep. you know, now we live in a society where that's no longer necessary. And exactly. even though there's wars still happening, we, we don't fight the same way anymore. You know, you could be a skilled, badass dude and get killed by some kid hiding in a bush with a gun. You know, it's just, it's not the same anymore. It's more psychological warfare it's, now. Yeah, it really, it, it, technological too. Yeah, like, it's more of a technological warfare. So it's it's not the same. There's there's not incentive to, to be a warrior anymore. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what a lot of men are missing in their, their young life is, is learning how to channel mm -hmm. the aggressiveness that comes from such a high testosterone levels. That's why levels. I, think he, I think every man should take self-defense. Every man. Even my daughter. I have a three-year-old daughter. Like She's going to learn self-defense. Men are being taught that being aggressive is bad. Yeah, it's yeah. not being aggressive that is bad. It's being weak as a man to say, yeah. "Hey, I can't channel that appropriately." It's like it's you know, it's yeah. like if I'm aggressive, I got to learn how to curb my appetite into something that's actually productive. Yep. But when the time is right, if somebody was to break into my home, I don't want my wife thinking that I couldn't defend her. Yeah, yeah. it's very important. But... I think this is ultimately why things like porn was created because it's like to a degree, yeah. people up top know that men need to channel their masculinity mm. into something. So let's channel and it into something that's going to make it end, weak. It's a dominance thing. At the end of the day, I want to be able to, you know, destroy you guys. So, I mean, in a good, healthy way. <laughs> in a good, so, healthy way. <laughs> more of the story. Learn self-defense. All right, and, let's go. Oh, God. At the end of the day, women want a masculine man. And, a lot, and when they don't have a masculine man mm, and they beat their man into submission, they're not attracted to them anymore. There's yep. a tail in between. Oh, it's just, yeah. it's just not attractive anymore. And I used to make me think of this boyfriend that I had when you were talking about, Ooh. you know, just defending the realm, Ooh, this sort of responsibility that men have. And I, I remember sitting there 
realizing that I had to break up with him because I thought that if somebody burst through the door with a gun, I was going to have to be the one that would have to defend Ooh. us because he was just Ooh. such a flower. 100%. And it's in society is yet blaring at men to do the opposite. Mm. And I Well, they're trying yeah. to confuse actually, us. This is why I think you have a platform. This is my whole theory that I built in my head about why you have a platform mm. is because Lena Dunham, Lena Dunham came before you, right? And I think that for years, men were told to act like sissies. Yep. Men were told Sissy. to put your tail between your legs. That was the message, the agreed upon message mm, so that sad. came with, you know, Hillary Clinton running, the Me Too movement, all of these things where men were basically told that if you have a masculine instinct, yep. you're guilty. Yep. Mm. And then inevitably, because there is an equilibrium in this world, yep. because there was Lena Dunham's, because there were the Taylor Swift's, because there was the girl squads, yep. eventually, what would have to happen was that it was going to have to be evened out by someone saying, no, F that, be a man. Yeah, mm. and I don't feel guilty for being a man, and I don't think any man should. No, I and don't I, think so either. Yep. And I don't think, and yep. I think that the most annoying thing about all of this is just how genuinely hypocritical it is. Because there's all this feminine movement, and we don't need men, and men don't matter, etc. That's Music only... Too many the whole, it's a, it's a agreed <laughs> upon like, message that me. men suck. Absolutely, and it's only in the most favorable possible circumstances where females will say that. And that's what's so disingenuous about it, because as soon as things actually begin to get hard, the closer we get to the realities of life, the closer we get to the unfortunate circumstances of the world, and they exist in many places, the faster you'll see people look for traditional masculinity to protect them. Mm -hmm. So it's not even like it's a genuine belief. That's what's so upsetting about it, is that it's just, I don't know if these people are delusional or if they're deliberately hypocritical. I'm not sure which one it is. I think but they're brainwashed. I think it's it's a two-prong approach. I think it's 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 the cultural messaging and also in the education system. They're actively learning that this like, feminism is what you need to aspire towards. Like when you get out of school, women, mm. you should want to compete with men in climbing the corporate ladder. Yeah. I actually think there, there's a, a mass brainwash that's taking place. Well, completely. They want to neuter men. And the neuter. way you do that is to like empower dogs. women to a point where they're now the dominant power, especially in the Western world. I believe we live in a matriarchy. I don't believe it's a patriarchy like we're told it is. I actually believe it's the other way around. Mm, I can't think of a single is. law that benefits men over women, but I can certainly think of some that benefit women over men. Especially I think it's very dangerous to be a man in the world today. I think yeah. that if women want to destroy a man, it's extremely easy to do. We can look at my current scenario and situation I'm in, and many other men are in the same scenario. I can't think of many examples of a man falsely accusing a woman of something and her losing her entire life. Where I can certainly think of ones the other way around. I know men so, have that. Yeah, they want tough, to man. turn men into eunuchs because their intention is to make us all slaves. And I say that and people, I, it rolls off my tongue and people just hear it and they don't actually think about what I'm saying. Their intention is to turn men into eunuchs because they want to make us all slaves. Mm -hmm. I want you to actually understand exactly what I'm saying to you because at the bottom line of revolution has always been young military age males and they don't want them to have enough balls or enough forward thinking or even enough care for anything outside of themselves to do something about it. Another thing people don't understand is that a lot of these attacks and a lot of things they're trying to do with the culture, especially, they're trying to inject such innate selfishness inside of people that they don't really care about anything that happens outside of themselves. Mm. Because then it's very difficult to give a shit about your community. It's very difficult to have any kind of genuine care about your town or your country or an issue. No, they just want you to be self-absorbed, semi-depressed because depressed people don't fight that hard watching porn, living inside of your own mind, convinced that somehow you're oppressed for some reason on the internet typing tweets. That's what they want you to do. And they're going to try and keep you there. Mm. And genuine masculinity, yeah, to a degree it's protective and to a degree also it has parameters. You, you can't be a man who doesn't say no. You can't be a man who doesn't have standards for himself and for people around him. Yeah, I agree. I got labeled as ultra misogynistic because I believe that a man should have standards in his relationship. I believe a man should avoid dishonest people, mm. male and female. You should avoid, if you're a dishonest person, if you lie, if you're gonna deceive me, it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman, I don't wanna have anything to do with you. I was sitting and talking on a panel show saying that women who are dishonest and promiscuous are not the kind of woman I'd ever wanna associate with, and I was labeled misogynistic for that. <laughs> so it's, it's crazy how they'll attack you, and they'll attack you so violently and so endlessly and repeat it so many times, in a, in, a, in a bid to beat your soul down. That's what they want, especially from me. I truly believe I'm the number one prize for them to get. If they can get me to just give up. If we can get Andrew Tate to just give up. Being a man's bad. Come on, Andrew, say it. And it's, it's like, it's, 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 it's dangerous one thing, but it's actually genuinely also sad. When I analyze the situation in the world we're in today, I, part of me feels sad that we've ended up in this place where the people who are in charge are so evil 
and their plans are so so heinous and the consequences so dire that they know they can only implement them if they genuinely remove the warrior spirit from every man on the planet. Mm -hmm. wow. It's kind of wow. sad. That's interesting. It's very true. The one thing I've always appreciated about Tate is how he will upfront say that men need to stop being pushed down by society, that he's about protecting the warrior spirit in men, that we are meant to be warriors. That's one thing we I really agree with him on. We've so far talked about so many different things that we disagree especially when it comes to accountability, which he says he takes. We have different opinions on that. But the one thing I do appreciate is that he is helping men to realize that we are strong, powerful creatures, that we have a place in this world, that we can have a voice, that we don't have to become weak and just allow everyone to run us over. And that's something I really appreciate about him. Yeah. Yeah. The The natural state of men today, it's, it's really, really difficult to be a strong, masculine man. It is. Because society the government the school system is teaching young boys how to be women yeah and how being a man is bad having masculine energy having a actually standing up for what's right saying no to people that don't deserve your time yeah being promiscuous as a woman or a man is wrong i think that's yeah. what that's that's the the difference that I would say from what he said is it's not just about promiscuous women. Yeah. It's about promiscuous men. Because if you have you have to have balance in every area of your life as a man. You can't just be successful, wealthy, have a lot of influence and status with and then be promiscuous as a reward. Yeah. The reward of being a high value man is that you have amazing wife, a beautiful family that you stick to no matter what. Yeah, because that's showing delayed gratification. It's showing patience and perseverance that you could you do have a lot of options. You yep. could go out and sleep with a bunch of women, yep. but you choose to say no, which is going back to what he said about no. And I, that's why I wanted to dig in deeper on that. It's OK to say no to to a bunch of women for the right one. I agree. Yeah. I mean, I think the most important thing about all this is that it's innate within us to be aggressive. It's innate within us to even be leaders um it's just it's so common today to not know how to lead yeah we're not taught that not in, in fact especially i mean you guys wouldn't fully understand this because you guys were homeschooled but i remember like in public school even like in elementary school like you know as soon as i'd start getting rambunctious with another kid you know maybe wrestle or whatever the case may be and i'd get in trouble you know why aren't you more like susie you need to act more like susie or mm. why aren't you more like you know her or her and like that's that's usually how it starts did you wrestle with karen <laughs> i wrestled with a lot of people anytime someone pissed me off in elementary school that was usually my go-to i'm gonna throw you down he's um, angry he's angry <laughs> but yeah that's you know that's that's typically where it starts is hey you need to stop acting like a boy and start acting like the other girls do you see any of the other girls running around like punching people and wrestling I've, them and i've always said i would rather my son of course there is a certain level of, of restraint but i would rather my son or daughter get in charge by fighting off someone in school than allowing the, themselves my daughter or son to become a victim of people at school you know bullying is rampant and Again, I'm not pushing anything against, you know, bullying is obviously very wrong, but I feel if we, if we made our children stronger and taught them that they can defend themselves, that they are a strong person, that it would not be as rampant because bullies would not feel that they can roam free and do whatever they want without consequences. All right, let's continue. And if we also analyze, I mean, there's certain things that women can do so much better than men. I said facts, this the other day, facts. I was saying to my brother. My brother had his daughter here and my niece was here. And I said, isn't it amazing? I, I found this amazing. I said, isn't it amazing the patience a mother has mm -hmm. with a toddler? <laughs> I'm like, she's been listening to Peppa Pig for four hours. I would lose I my relate. mind. I couldn't do it. I simply couldn't do it. So women have this emotionality, which is so fantastic when it's properly used, when it's right. put into place yeah. it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. I would never drop my child off to a daycare full of men. Would never, you drop your three-year-old child to a daycare never. one exclusively by males? No. It'd be weird. It's just something about <laughs> it is weird. I wouldn't trust the men not to lose their temper with the kid. I wouldn't understand why all these men want to be around these children all day. It would be very weird scenarios. So we all weird. understand innately our gender roles, innately on some level. So women have a fantastic superpower when it's properly used. But like everything on earth, if you have a superpower or any kind of power at all and it's put in the wrong direction, it can be destructive. Water 
if it's going through a dam, can power a city. If it's not going through a dam, it's a flood. So we have all this emotionality mm. put in the yep. wrong direction, and now they're analogy. in positions of power or whatever, Facts. or they're controlling the culture, or they're controlling how uh, households are run, and they can fall for these emotional traps, these very simple, basic emotional traps. It's for grandma. The most basic, <laughs> dumb <laughs> level. And I, I sit there and say, grandma's 98. 98-year-olds die. And I'm not saying she should die. I'm not saying, I'm saying 98 year olds get sick. Who said it was COVID? Prove it was COVID. She got the flu last year. Like, what? Have you lost your mind? All right, let's stop it there. Yeah, we're not going to go. We're not going to go into COVID. Things. Yeah, we're not going into that. Uh, it's so true, though. Like, the differences between men and women are so, so simple, but so complex. Because the way that women, they comfort. And the way that they can be patient and nurture. I don't know what I would do without my wife because I'm way more reactionary. I'm way more logical. Women tend to be more emotional and they're moved more by emotion. Mm -hmm. And you need that balance. And I don't know what I would do without my wife. My daughter, I feel, is very emotionally secure because of my wife. Um, I give my daughter a lot of security too. But there's something about women that it's a beautiful thing. I love that women have that attribute that they're different than me that they have different ways of operating that they are able to balance out sometimes my harsh analytical self what what would you guys do if i had a five-year-old kid and i was facetiming you on the way to a daycare and i was like hey i'm gonna drop my kid off and it's all run by men what would you guys as my brothers tell me i would hope I mean, I, I would have the same reaction if if I were to FaceTime you and say, hey, I'm building a house tomorrow and it's and it's run by a team of women. It's just women building my house. All the construction workers. That's all that's all, it's, that's it's all they're take doing longer. It's going to take longer. It's probably not going to get done. Right? Well, you know, I mean, there are good. <laughs> I mean, there are good yeah, yeah. women. That are sure. If they're all butch. <laughs> they got they all gotta be butch. You just love to drop the hammer, don't you? Little drop Thor, little Thor. Well, over I mean, here. you know, when, hammer, when you're dude. building a house, you know, oh, heavy, heavy things man. gotta be lifted oh, from one floor God. to the other. Okay. You know, that oh, was funny as that, hell. <laughs> they oh, all gotta be butch. God. You gotta all be at least over 180 pounds. <laughs> have more testosterone than you're supposed to have, maybe. Oh my. God. God. But, but even the then, day, like, the if it, thing. but even then, if it was a daycare ran by like entirely gay men, I would still have an issue with that. I'd it's say just, no. <laughs> yeah. no I Isaac, what do you think? Learn to value our differences. Men and women are not the same. They're not. We have different strengths. We have different weaknesses. Yeah. We are able to balance each other out, and I think we need to learn to accept that more. But let's move on. But if you don't give a man struggle, look what he becomes. Tell me the kind of man. If I were to say to you, imagine a man who's never struggled in his life, physically, <laughs> mentally, everything's gone perfect for him. Oh, Born man. in the royal family, everything's been perfect for him his whole life. Is that the kind of man anybody respects? Is that no. the kind of man anyone wants no. to be? Never. And struggle Ever. is subjective, right? So <laughs> Prince Harry dealing with, his, dealing with his current problems of his wife nagging, to him, that's full mental breakdown, right? <laughs> My problems are obviously much larger, but struggle is subjective. And to him, Prince to us, Harry. they're almost on the same level. But if you were to compare them side by side, they're absolutely nothing. So as a man, you have to build resilience and you build resilience through going through something and building a tolerance to it. And this guy's had such a privileged life that he's ended up a miserable, depressed, unhappy person. So this is what's actually very interesting when men come to me or young boys come to me and talk about something bad that happened to him. I said, good. Absolutely. You're not really good. You should be glad that thing happened to you because that's the reason you're going to be the man who can resist the perils of life in the future. Yep. If bad things don't yep. happen to you, you're going to end up like Prince Harry. <laughs> You do want to end up like that, dude, do you? No. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you're gonna have, your life's going to be so easy, you're going to get to the end result and your wife's just going to wreck you. So you need to have all these bad things happen to you so you build the mental resilience. And that's another thing about masculinity and, and males as a whole. We're trying to take that all away from them in almost every regard. And it's kind of like, there used to be like rites of passage where a boy would become a man. That's all gone. There used to be this masculine, very healthy peer pressure to be big and strong and that's all gone. There mm -hmm. used to be, I mean, I don't want to use the wrong words. I don't want to get attacked for it. But men used to conscious, not pick on each other, not bully each other. But hey, you can't do push up. You're weak. We push each other in That's that way. We, yeah. That's Shame each other That's to excellence do. almost. We still do it to this day in this house. Tristan's bigger than me. He's 10 kilo bigger than me. Six foot four. I'm six foot three. I'm smaller. He'll bench 160, 170 kilo. I can only Jeez. bench 150 kilo. He'll call me a for three hours. 
Like, that's just how we are. So I have to get up and try again. That's how men are. We've taken well, all- Women are too. And, and that's what I'm really against. Sorry to cut you off, but I'm super against this, this parenting structure where you don't want anybody's feelings to get hurt. I'm mm-hmm. one of three sisters. We're a year and a half apart. We tried to kill each other. You know what I mean? <laughs> all I would do is call my sister. No one has called her uglier more. You know what I mean? I'm like, you're ugly. You're this. You're fat. Da, 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 da. That's actually good. Yep. You know, it, it makes you tougher. And when you see these only ch- children who've yep. never gone through anything, their parents told them they were perfect and wonderful. Yep. And I'm thinking, I wouldn't trade my childhood trying me and my sister's trying to kill each other you know every single day it's difficult over a t-shirt yeah you know? that's good that's yeah. good andrew tate has a really shiny head by the way <laughs> it's the lighting bro as a film yeah. person you can balance that out i mean he just he's groomed very well it's very it's very good to see oh yeah I, I fully agree with him um you know but i think bullying is a bad label because to yeah. a degree i i fully believe that bullying is almost a structure that's put in place in nature to challenge men to overcome. It's almost it's almost like a sure fire way to at some point be forced to face resistance. I think the bullying when it comes to be a bad a really bad thing. I mean bullying's not good. Is when it's a group versus an individual. Well, yeah, and, and sure. that's and that's often sure. the situation. Is even in these movies, which isn't which is not always reality. You have five kids that just pick and beat up on a kid, and that's horrible. You know, we're not condoning that. But if you have a guy, one guy that's just constantly pushing you at at, at school, you have to learn that bullies will cease to exist when they have resistance because when they don't feel like they have that power anymore then they kind of go away well they only go after easy targets yeah. if they know you're you're going to punch them in the yeah. mouth uh, but i love the whole yeah. prince harry <laughs> illustration because stuff are meant going through mental struggle is very subjective and it comes down to callousing your mind to be able to push through different things right when you first go to the gym your first day after 30 minutes, you feel like you're dying. Yeah. But then after three months of working out, you work out for two hours and then two hours later, you're like, I could go again, right? So it's about building up your resilience and being able to push back. And then when you go through struggle, you become better. It's like they say, failure is not really failure unless you give up. We, right? can't, we can't be ignorant to the fact that suffering is a promise as men. Yeah. It is. It's it is a absolutely promise. a promise. The yep. higher uh, I like, I hear this. I like the saying, "Bigger levels, bigger devils." Right. Yeah. So the higher status that you get in life, the the problems are not just going to go away. They're going to amplify because the more influence that you have, the more people want to take you down. Right. The more people want to come against you and be a hater and 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 literally just try to cyber bully you. Like I guarantee you, a lot of people that that try to cyber bully Andrew and Tristan, if they met him in perfect they in person, they would just be wusses. Oh yeah, they would be like, oh yeah, you wanna you wanna say this to my face? You know, that's the problem with the online social media right now is that if you're gonna gonna say it, this is old this is old school respect. If you're gonna say it online and be personal, you better as hell do it in person. Yeah. Women don't want neutered men. They don't. Uh, even if they even if they personally neuter them themselves, it's not what they want in the end. So I'll ask the question what do you think men want in women? Ooh, that's a really good question. That's a good one. And I can answer that one easily. I think that the masculine realm that we operate in is based on respect. Yes. I think that men are constantly looking for a way to be respected. Correct. I think the world is hyper competitive and we're constantly always looking for status amongst our peers. This is why you will see a man give up his basically entire life to do something which will only gain him respect, even in a very small sphere. There are CEOs who go to work every day and don't even see their family and give up their entire life and work 12 hour days just to feel like the man in that office. Feeling important in that one office, in that one skyscraper is worth him giving up his life because he feels like he matters. And if he gets more respect in that office than he does at home or anywhere else, that's where he's gonna wanna Mm -hmm. be. Men function on that. So Mm -hmm. if I had to build the ideal woman who could get any man on earth. What she would have to do is understand that I need to give my man as much status and as much respect as possible. Mm. I, by extension of him, being next to him, need to make him look respected. And Mm. a lot of this is the easy things we know. No one's gonna respect a man who's with an ultra promiscuous woman. No one's gonna respect a man who's with a woman who is back talking him or horrible to him in public. No one's gonna respect a man who's with a woman who clearly isn't interested in him sexually, whatever. That's all the obvious part. But the hidden actual message behind all of it is that men are constantly looking for status and respect and a woman who makes 
her man feel respected, not only from her, but from his peers, is the kind of woman a man's never going to want to lose. Right. So wow. I, I saw a video one time that was so powerful. It was actually a woman that was speaking and she was on a podcast. She said, there is a false idea out there that when you are in a relationship that the respect has to be earned. And let me go with this. She said, and she looked at women, how would you feel if the man says, oh, you have to earn my love when you're already in a relationship? Yeah. You have to earn my love. Our love should be given because you love the other person. Respect is the same way. You have to respect your significant other because you love them and you're in a relationship and you're committed to them. This aspect of, oh, he has to earn my respect. If that's the case, then you can't be upset if he doesn't love you the way that you want to And be he loved. stays at the office until exactly. 2 a.m. because yeah. he doesn't want to come back. I yeah. mean, that's, that's a fundamental issue with how women think nowadays because... A lot of women, not everybody. The way a man is supposed to build himself to find a woman to begin with is earning the respect of the woman, which is why she selected him in the first exactly. place. This idea exactly. of like, I picked him, but yet somehow he still needs to and earn then I'm my gonna respect. And then I'm going to hold back that respect when yeah. he doesn't do everything. Absolutely. Like Absolutely. 100% agree with this. No, that's great. Um, that's a power. I, I think I'll take it even a step further because respect is kind of like part of just bringing peace to a man's life. It's so true. We need peace. We need peace because like men, especially men who are working hard and are constantly trying to level up or are already there. Life is just a constant war. It's constant struggle, constant yep. issues that we have to deal with. And like, we don't want to come home and you be an issue too. You know, like we want to come home and like, our home be like almost this fairy tale land where Safety. like somehow like yeah. all the issues of the world no longer exist and you know elevator music's playing and like <laughs> you know what i'm saying no, like it things need to be more peaceful it comes back to the man being the man being strong and giving the woman safety because women tend to not freak out and then disrespect the man as much when they feel that they are taken care of and that their needs are met too. So it's it's a marriage, right? There has to be give and take in a relationship. But you have to understand that if you are always looking for the other person to deserve what you're giving them, yeah, then that's when marriages and relationships fall apart. Absolutely. I have no, nothing to say. I'm not married. So. <laughs> Do you want to be married? Ooh. Mm. Good Ooh. question. I heard that's the lover boy face. tactic. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but... <laughs> yeah. And that's an interesting question because younger me, younger me would say no, absolutely not. And, and the reason younger me would say no is because I've come up with all the arguments that there's no legal advantage really, and there the is. woman can wreck you, and oh, you can lose all of your things, etc. What's the point? I don't want the government involved in my life, all those kind of arguments. But as I get older, maybe I'm getting a bit softer. Maybe I do think sometimes you need to make Softy. a decision based purely on love and have the faith of, of love and faith in your love yeah. enough to, to say, I don't care what the government's going to do about this because I truly believe in us and I think we're going to make it. Wow. So, so would I get different. married perhaps at some changed. point he has. in the future? I might get married. Yeah. I, I, I'm not against marriage like I used to be. I used to be super face. against it. And I think that's because I grew up in an environment where everybody was divorced. Mm. everyone so it's like well what's the point in this oh wait so i give her half my stuff and then what what the, i don't i didn't understand the whole point of it but now i think if i met the right woman perhaps yes yeah marriage is, is good so he hasn't yeah? met her yet if it's the, convert convert me Kendra. yeah if, convert. It, if it's the right person if you marry the right person and i'm saying this is someone who grew up with divorced parents um well they got to, they got divorced after i was out of the house but it he's a muslim he's still gonna this go gets, on to say it he speaks to your board. earlier point about it either impacts you one way or the other you either yeah. want marriage because your parents were divorced yeah. you don't want marriage i desperately wanted marriage and i think the ways in which we both have grown yeah um and the confidence that it gives you i think there is something mm. about people are like, how do you do what you do every day because you cannot impact my life is so stable the yeah. nucleus of our household is so stable yeah. and to be able to raise kids and have them see that example of the perfect yin and the yang yeah. there's something divine about it there's something spiritual about it it's why i won't accept you i think you are actually a libertarian right now and i won't accept you as a libertarian i think you will not be one in a few years, if I had to make a prediction, I think you will lean towards conservatism because even in just the crack of you talking about the attack on masculinity. Yeah. Uh, as as Isaac hates when I say, 
as the married man. The married man. The married God, man. There it is. The no, man. I can relate to what Candace is saying because when you get married, you have to stick it out through the, st- the tough stuff unless you want to go through the horrible process of divorce. When you're dating someone or and just say, you know, we're not going to get married, there's an easy out. And as far as the him not knowing if there's any governmental benefits, one, there's tax breaks. But also, yeah. I think in society, one important thing, which we've even discussed and we have slightly different opinions on, I do believe that if you have kids with a woman and you are married, that getting married does protect them because sure. society is filled with so many weak men that if they just decide to leave and then the woman is stuck with the kid and no income because they've been a house mother, you know, housewife their whole life, that could be a horrific, they could be homeless. See, I don't disagree. However, I don't think, I, I 100% do not believe you need the government to do that for you because as Judge Judy has even said, like, just a napkin with crayon with your signature on it is enough for the courts to back that up. Now, I do think that there has to be official documents. I don't think that just verbal. Well, you can go get it notarized. But like yeah. my point is, yeah, you know, get married within the church, you know, have like a nice spiritual wedding if you need to. That's yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. I think that it's it's nice and it's fun to be able to celebrate making a commitment I like agree. that. I agree. Um, I just believe that afterwards you should sit down with your wife, write out terms, say, hey, just in the off chance that I die or something bad were to happen, these are the terms that we're going to follow. This is what's going to happen what afterwards. What if the man leaves, though? Well, that that's something that should be outlined in the agreement that but, you guys write up for yourself. You go and get it notarized. And but then, then that's also part of the government. Because if you get it notarized, you're making it so that it is a actual piece of documentation that the government can use in the in this case of a divorce. If you don't have the government involved at all, then it is purely up to the morality of the individuals. And since our society is so corrupt and men are, are weak and leave their families all the time, there's obviously infidelity and things that are, you know, makes that the case. But I'm still, I want to make sure that women and their children are taken care of. I don't think that Jeff Bezos should have to give his wife fifty billion dollars. See like that's, that, but see that's, see, that's the problem it. with. But with, they should have had, in my opinion, they should have sat down and been like, okay, in the case of a divorce, you get ten million, twenty million, whatever it is. You know, I don't like that she got half of that. You know, there's every why? situation's why? different. Because it's wrong. I mean, you didn't do anything to earn that money. He did. I think fi- for her to get fifty billion dollars, that makes it so then she can leave whenever she wants. And exactly. it makes it, it's it, a, yeah, it's it, a very it, controversial. It, yeah, thing. It, it almost incentivizes her to do that. It absolutely but incentivizes. But I'm still of the mind that the reason the government is involved in marriage is because if we took them out of marriage entirely, you're going to have broken single woman, single, uh, yeah, single woman households where she has two or three kids, and they literally have no way to. But survive. see, the problem is, is, is you know, the government's already involved, in, and the amount of single mother households have only increased since the government got involved. Well, when I did, think when but, did the government? All right, involve let me let me say something. Yeah. I think ultimately, it comes back to this entire conversation has come to a pinnacle of, if men were truly men, then we wouldn't have these problems in the first place. We wouldn't I because. Agree. I agree. If if we're talking about marriage, the government getting involved is a lot of these laws that were put in place were put in place by men, right? But it's a dominance thing. They want you if you can control the way men think, and you know brainwash them into believing that they're weak, they will leave. Yeah, they will leave the house. They well, will leave a, the, the cultu- their wife. It's a cultural thing, right? It's a Western it, mindset that it's, has dominated our thoughts. It's, unfortunately, it's something that's extremely difficult to overturn. Yeah. That's why we're creating this po- this podcast and we're doing reaction videos. So this is because we do want men to become stronger. But it is a long term game. This isn't going to happen overnight. But it no, is. it's it's interesting because we have different views, but we can respect each other's opinion and understand where each other comes from. That's the whole thing. Why men need to talk stuff out is because a lot of people in today's society. If you have a different viewpoint, then you're all of a sudden canceled or you're not allowed to share it. But us men respecting each other. and That's what true men do. They respect each other in the midst of of disagreement. Exactly. Well, the thing is, is like, I don't feel like we entirely disagree. Like, I do believe there should be some type of support system. I agree. To help in the case of divorce. My only thing is write up your own contract, get it notarized. So that way, if things have to go to the divorce court, 
Yeah. They have to abide by the contract that yeah. you both agreed upon. I do agree. So we're saying the same thing. There has to be a certain level of government involvement, but talk it out beforehand and make sure that yeah. it's fair. For don't both let sides. the government write the contract for oh, you. Oh, no. Don't do that. Just don't do that. Because that's the problem with divorce court nowadays. Oh. Marriage. 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 All right, let's keep going. <laughs> So I do want you to contextualize this video that has been circulating oh, on the internet of you talking, talking about the lover boy method. So oh, we'll take a boy. look at that right now. Sure. You cannot get a girl to work for you having fun. Oh. So the recruitment process is the same as the PhD course. You message them on Instagram. The PhD course is my recruitment system. I don't mention webcam until after I've had sex with the girl. Oh if you're on God. dates and you're trying to mention it and shit, it, it just doesn't work. It puts them off. I'd never do that. That's disgusting. I'm not a whore. Uh, it's just not going to work. You continue yeah. as normal. No mention of webcam. You f*** the girl. After you f*** the girl, you do the PhD test. If she passes the PhD test and she wants to be with you, then you start mentioning things like, yeah, but you know, you're always busy. You're always at work. You can come work for me. Okay, so first question, when uh, was this video taken? Yeah, so this video is from 10 years ago, and this is me explaining how having a webcam company, it's actually a larger video as a whole. I'm explaining how having a webcam company can affect your relationships and how it affects your dating life. It also explains the fact that one of the girls I was dating at the time was working on webcam at mm -hmm. the time. And it's explaining my general overall explains my life and how things are affected owning a pornography company, because obviously a lot of women will be put off by that. It doesn't explain, it doesn't say, I'd be very careful how I answer this question because I'm currently under an investigation, right? Mm -hmm. So I'd be very careful how I answer it. People are trying to chop it up and say that it says I am using uh, the lover boy method to somehow convince women to do things they didn't want to do. This is obviously not the case and none of this is in the case file for a reason because it doesn't exist and none of these women are upset. But this is simply me explaining. It's actually a dating course I made a long time ago. And I'm a little bit embarrassed about it, to be honest with wow. you, because it was That's 10 years ago and I was talking about women and dating and things in a way that I wouldn't talk about them anymore. Right. Interesting. So, yeah, and you look very young in the video. I'm super young. And I'm talking about, hey, when you sleep with this girl or you meet that girl or you meet this girl on Instagram and I have a webcam company, I don't tell them I have a webcam company. And I just think all oh, that's kind of crass and it's below me. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I don't really like talking about it. And mm. it's amazing how things change as you mature and you get older. But once again, I was a much younger man. I think if you were to take any 24-year-old and look at the stuff he puts on the internet, some of it's going to be stupid. And I think if you look at anybody who made things 10 years ago, some of it's going to be stupid. It's absolutely not really not criminal in any regard. There's right. nothing criminal about it. It has no bearing or any interest in the current case. But yeah, I was talking about how I talk. I don't mention I have a webcam business. The basic premise of the video was me explaining that I don't mention I have a webcam business ever. And that I'm Mr. Rich and I have this nice car and I go on dates with girls. And sometimes when I say I have a webcam business, some of them want money and they want to work for me. That's the basic premise of it. Right. I, I'm glad to hear that you're not proud of the video. And I think that that's one of those things where I yeah. say that people don't allow you to grow up from things that you've done or said in the past. That's and this fair. is obviously when you mm -hmm. were operating a webcam business you're Completely. talking about. And, and that's the whole thing about the human experience. We're supposed to grow, right? And we're supposed to make mistakes and we're supposed to learn from them and we're supposed to... Uh, evolve as people. And I'm certainly not proud of the video. When I say I'm not sorry for what I've done, I don't mean it in a, I would do the same things again. I don't mean it that way. I mean that at the time I was a lot less knowledgeable and I was younger and I made some mistakes. And just like I'm sure Jay-Z would never crack, sell crack again. Right. Exactly the same reason I would never make a stupid video saying something so stupid again. I also could have never predicted the fact that I was going to become one of the most famous people on the planet. Right. I didn't see I that coming. And if I did, I would have been a lot more careful with what I said and how I said it. And I do think that it's part of every person's journey to make some mistakes and learn from them and grow from them. And I kind of find it interesting that if I was a reformed drug addict, there'd be no problem. If I was a reformed murderer, there'd be no problem. If I was a mafia boss and I'd sit here and I'd kill three people and we were doing an interview and I was like, yeah, I used to kill people. I've done my time. I'm out of jail now. That I get less flack than if I made a video talking about dating when I used to have a business that did webcam than I currently right. get, you know? So all I can do is understand that I was a younger man. I did the best I could at the time. And, uh, I was trying my very best to survive in a very harsh world. And I, I, I understand now that a lot of the way I said things, I certainly shouldn't have said them that way, but none of it is criminal. Right. Mm. And it, again, oh, has no bearing on your case. So kind of the things we said on the earlier reactions, he kind of addresses that. He's not yeah. directly apologizing, but he's explaining that he's not the same person he was. So I think we need to put some level of perspective that grace too, grace that people do horrible things he's saying he would never do that again 
Uh, I've made a lot of mistakes. I've made in my some. Past. I've made so oh, many yeah. mistakes. I mean, if I they mean, if if they went through my past with a fine tooth comb, it would be embarrassing. You know, there's a lot of things that I've done that I've regretted. You know, his method of you know saying he made a mistake. You know, I get why he's doing what he's doing. I think it 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 would be more genuine if he would just outright say he was sorry for it. You know, but he he was ten years ago. Even the cadence. And the way that the he way talks he ten years ago yeah. was so different to this interview, right? Oh, dude, I've you watched you can just so see it in his videos, face. Yeah. He's grown up. He pro- he has kids now. He you know has a wife or probably multiple. But well, he said he's not married. So he's, yeah, he's yeah, a he has girlfriends Girl. or whatever. You know, yeah. I genuinely believe that something's going to happen to him in the next six to twelve months that is going to have him see the light. I, I mean, that's so, what we're man. we're I hoping. Hope. We're praying for him that he will see the light. That he will come back to you know his faith. That he will be a, a man that you know speaks up against this stuff a little bit more intentionally. I think that's yeah. the purpose. Is language as a man is very important. The way you communicate and articulate yeah. your thoughts means something. Yeah, I agree. Like I said before in previous videos, he just started this journey. Yeah, right. He's yeah. he's ultimately still a baby in his faith in God. Yeah, yeah. So I I imagine as time goes on, there's gonna come a point where he's gonna realize like. It's not about the woman. It's about the men he affected. And he probably yeah. will speak on that more. Like, sorry, so, guys. Like, you know, I, I, mean, I took, took advantage of savings, you. You know? Yeah. That's, um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, this, I, I don't, I don't, I don't fully, I'm not surprised that this is as close to an apology as we're going <laughs> to see out of him <laughs> right, right now. All right, we got one more clip, guys. I know this has been a long journey. Please subscribe if you haven't yet. If you made it this way, this far, we really appreciate you guys following us and committing We've had some interesting thoughts. Let us know below what you think. So, they will for the rest of your career. I'm, I'm sure they will, yeah. and it's fine, and that's fine. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it's just like okay, ten years ago, ten years, a decade. Yeah, they're going to keep making you answer for it yeah. in every capacity. I've, I've seen that. It, God forbid you misspeak, you miss a word while you're saying something. They will circulate it over and over again. That's yeah. just the yeah. world of social media. For me, what I feel is I don't feel guilty about them, but I do feel embarrassed because I don't feel like the way I spoke about women or the way I spoke about romantic relationships is my current view on romantic relationships. I think I've certainly matured. I was a young, brash, arrogant guy. This Mm. is what happens when you have Mm. a young kickboxer who's beating everyone up, making a bunch of money from the streets. So much. I was a young, brash, arrogant guy, and I spoke in a way I perhaps shouldn't have spoke. And I'm sure if Jay-Z makes a song today, he won't speak about women and crack and drugs the way he used to speak about women and crack and drugs. It's just the reality of life. And you have to grow and you have to take the embarrassment which comes from growing. So I will certainly sit here and make sure, I think the whole world understands that that's not my message. That's not why I'm teaching young boys today. The young boys mm-hmm. who are following me today have no interest in these videos and don't watch these videos unless they're pushed by haters. And I think that overall, I'm a net positive for the world. I think that men being so disenfranchised is, I want to say something quickly about the British school system. The English school system has attacked me and they're trying to put me, they've spent billions of dollars trying to remove me from schools because young boys were running around saying, what color is your Bugatti and repeat, repeating my sayings. <laughs> I don't think I can really truly be held responsible for the fact that young boys repeat a saying, especially one that's not particularly aggressive. I think that shows that the young boys are looking for a hero and someone to look up to. And I feel like I'm filling a gap. And that's why I understand it's so important. I say very good things and teach very good things. And I don't think I would have learned so much good if I hadn't been involved to a degree with the dark and the bad. I don't think there is light without dark. A lot Mm. of my lessons and a lot of the messages I give to the world come from the fact that I grew up in one of the worst areas of the Western world, surrounded by drug dealers, surrounded by real pimps doing real bad things, surrounded by broken homes. I learned all these lessons. And if I had never had those experiences and never grew up in that scenario, how could I be a person who's now teaching young men, disenfranchised young men, the realities of the world? Mm. How could I? We talked earlier about having a sheltered life. A sheltered life doesn't allow you to be the kind of man who can teach. So yeah, I spoke in a way I shouldn't have spoke. Yeah, I regret the video completely. Have Mm. I ever hurt anybody? No. Has any of the girls who are being mentioned in that video come forward with anything other than defense of me? No. Interesting. Nobody was actually hurt. It was just very brash, very arrogant, very bad delivery, which I regret. I see I ho- the transformation. I, I see the transformation. I, I, I mean, yeah. actions speak louder than words. Yeah. It's just words right now. We got to yeah. see the, the fruit yeah. of what he's saying in his own life. And, 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 I mean, Jordan, what do you think of what you've seen? The transformation, verbally at least, you know, that he said on this video. We haven't seen the fruit action-wise necessarily in fruition. But he's like you said earlier, he's on that journey. 
like all of us men are, so, yeah. you know, become better men and, and have a better mindset and a better character. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, he's far more stoic, far less brash. That's true. Um, and arrogant. He's yeah. He's 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 far more calculated today than he was, you know, five, six, seven years ago. Um, you know, you you could go back and look at old podcasts of him, and it's like his volumes way up here. He's all over the place, super flamboyant, and here, you know, it's just he's very stoic now. Yeah. Um. I mean, in terms of like his actions, you know, he does donate a lot of money, like millions and millions of dollars million a year. Yeah. To feed homeless people. And, you know, he does a lot more than people realize. And I like how, you know, even in other videos, he's talked about how he doesn't like talking about those things. He's ashamed of it. Well, no, I mean, like, he doesn't like talking about the good things. Oh, that oh, he oh does. the good things. Good I things. thought you were referring to Yeah. Because he doesn't want, you know, people to think that he puts Promote, yeah. he promotes that about himself yeah. but those are things that he does do um which are pretty good fruits of his of his labor you know yeah i think there's we believe i think all three of us believe that actions speak louder than words i know a lot of you in the comments on our previous reaction have explained that you think he's a flaming liar um just watch this let us know what you think about it. We want to get your guys' feedback on do you think that Andrew Tate's for real? Do you think he's a changed person? Do you think he's just saying this so that you know the Romanian government sees him in a better light? We don't know. We're just kind of giving our reaction to it. But uh, I appreciate you guys sticking around. Remember, when we get to 100,000 subscribers, we're all going to eat a Carolina Reaper pepper. If we get to a million, all three of us will go bald. Deal? No. For a million? <laughs> absolutely not. Gee, come on, you got to give the fans something. No, about. absolutely. The only way I'm cutting my hair is if I lose in battle. <laughs> <laughs> like in, like you get scalped? Yeah, I got to get scalped. <laughs> we'll do a tattoo on Jordan's shoulders of our choice, and then we'll both shave our heads. If uh, we get to a million subscribers, I might shave my head. I've got, I've, I've got every inch of my body planned out for a tattoo. <laughs> I'm not doing that either. We appreciate it, guys. So we will see you guys again. But don't forget, we're the Wilson Brothers. We are. Subscribe. Peace. Subscribe. Peace.